Now, by the way, do you think the manager was a bad manager? Do you think he was intentionally doing this? I don't think for so for a second. I think he had a lack of awareness, a lack of consciousness about the little things that he was saying and doing and how they were affecting Zach. And by the way, it runs downhill too. So it was affecting the other people there too. And boy, I talked to a few of them after Zach left. They were pretty upset. Now, some of you folks out there might be thinking, well, maybe Zach wasn't doing a lot of things so well. Well, let me just put this in perspective for whatever it's worth. His store was consistently, month after month, number one or number two in their district of 10 stores. Folks, the stuff we're talking about here is not Pollyannish. I want to suggest that if Zach had simply been acknowledged for the good things he was doing, he would have been open to the possibility of improving in other areas. He knew he wasn't perfect in those other areas. Here's how I see it. You acknowledge me for what I'm doing well, and you earn the right to suggest what I might do even better. You folks know this. You have been masterful at demonstrating exactly the concept we're talking about with regard to giving us feedback about these videos. You almost always told us what you appreciated and what was good about the videos before you ever made any suggestion for improvements. And you know what? Every time you've done that, we have been totally open to your suggestions. Zero resistance to your suggestions. Now, in fact, it just occurred to me. This is interesting. We must have had over nine dozen comments on our, on our blog and email feedback. And out of those nine dozen or so, whatever the number is, well over 100, I know that. I can only remember one bit of email feedback that came in that went directly to the recommendation of the improvement without first acknowledging what we had done well. Now, I, I, I want to say this. That person didn't have any intention of giving us negative feedback. Their intention was to help us improve the videos and the whole process. But the truth is, what I'm realizing, even though their intent was good, the intent was to help us. You know what? I got a little defensive. I admit it. Even if I know all this stuff, I got a little defensive. So why have we been so open to your input in virtually every other case? Because you've earned the right to encourage even betters from us because you first praised us for what we're doing well and what you appreciate about it. Do you see the difference? The simple solution to performance reviews is to honestly and sincerely acknowledge someone for the things you appreciate about them and what they are doing before asking them to do something more or differently. See, honest, sincere praise. Those are big words, aren't they? You got to be honest. You got to be sincere. You got to dig deep sometimes in a tough situation. Honest, sincere praise softens people naturally. Doesn't it soften you? Think about it. When people feel honored for what they have done and indeed who they are, that's what it really gets down to. The feeling of who they are. They become open to the possibility of being even better and doing even better. Let me complete this video by sharing a four-step process for performance reviews. Now, I got to tell you right now, we, one of the inputs we got, which is a great one, is, boy, give us a handout with the information. I agree, that's a really good idea. And when we're doing these free, the free ones right now and put a lot of effort into it, the truth is we just don't have the resources to do that at this point, but it is noted and I do realize the importance of that. So here it is. Take notes, please. Step one, you're, you, these are questions you're asking the person, the person you're reviewing. What have you done well over this last period of time? What do you feel good about, about what you've done? The key question that's part of this one, what else? 
What else? What else? You want to keep them, keep asking them, what do they feel good about? What have they done well, etc. Really get that out because that's going to really shift the energy in the room. It's going to build a lot of energy. By the way, don't surprise them. Don't hit. This is not a technique that you want to hit them with and trick them. This is not a trick question. Let them know when you plan the meeting, hey, here's one of the key questions I want you to address. Okay, now step two, the second question. What are your specific performance objectives? Now, depending on your company, that might involve KPIs, key performance indicators, whatever. But what you want to do here is just simply review them to make sure that you and that person are in alignment with what those objectives are. Make sure this crystal clear because that's critical to the performance side. Step three, this is the action plan. What can you do during this next period of time to move closer to those objectives? What can you do to move closer to the objectives and indeed achieve those objectives? Again, what else? What else? What else? Keep asking what else until there are no more answers and then move on. And then step four. Step four is a very powerful question that some people have a little bit of reluctance to use. But I assure you that it'll be worth it. The fourth question is what can I do to help you achieve your objectives? That question asked sincerely will be tremendously appreciated. In fact, the typical response I get and by the way, the reason you might not want to ask it is you're, you're, you're afraid that they might want you to do a whole bunch of things. Doesn't happen. Just doesn't happen in the decades I've been doing that. The typical response is, wow, uh, thanks for the question and thanks for the offer. I can't think of anything right now, but uh, if I do, I'll get back with you. Now, you know what? Sometimes they will get back with you. And when they do, I would say it virtually always is asking for your help in a way that it's appropriate for your role. It's just nothing to fear about. Powerful question, and you know what? I'll bet many of you out there are already asking that question. So put these four together. Let's go back over them one more time. One, what have you done well? What are you feeling good about in this first, in this, in what's, what you've already been doing? Second, what are your specific performance objectives? Let's make sure we're in alignment on that. Third, what can you do during this next period of time to move closer to those objectives and perhaps achieve those objectives? And then the very last part of the entire meeting, you've had lots of discussion. And that last part is, what can I do to help you achieve your objectives? Use this four-step approach right away. Go out, pick a person on your team, and go use it. Do not pick the toughest. Pick an easy situation. But use it and see how easy it will actually flow using this process. See how effective it is, and you'll come back to it time and time again. As soon as you've had a little bit of practice, then you'll be much more open to do it with one of your toughest customers, if you will. The result will be much higher performance of the individual being um, reviewed, and the performance reviews will be much easier for you to do. It becomes a conversation, not something you have to do. So until next time, this is Ed Oakley inviting you to give us feedback, inviting you to complete the survey so we'll know additional topics you'd like to see. And the survey is, is the link is under each video that we're doing and wishing you well. Make it a good week.